want to help yourself to some refreshments. Um, and then just as a general note, the restrooms are behind uh, Jordan in the seat over there. If you go behind there, you'll find the restrooms. Um, what else, Rosie? I think that was, oh yeah, if you need parking validations or transit passes, come to Rosie. Yeah, yeah, so I can do that at the end of the meeting or whenever you have to leave. Um, and then just other kind of general items. When we're talking, please use the microphone. It'll light up. There's a button on it. It'll light up green um, if it's on so that the people online can hear us. All right. Oops. Okay, so our agenda today, we're gonna start with some quick introductions um, and then we're gonna take a group photo. We'll be taking two of those. So for the folks in person, we're gonna go into the lobby and take a photo in there. And the online folks will have you wait for just a second while we do that. And then we'll come in here and put all of your, uh, we'll ask if you can to turn your camera on because then we'll take a photo with all of us in front of the TV so we can get our online folks. Um, and then we're gonna have a community member share which Curtis will be doing that, thank you. And then we're gonna have a discussion. Um, we've talked a little bit about this before but we wanna just capture future agenda items that you'd like to hear or if there are things that you want to learn about a little bit more, we'll get together and try and figure out um, how we can bring that information. Or if you have ideas of people you'd like to bring here that are relevant to the topics we discuss, we'll just have a discussion on that. And then um, item five, I have transit planning. We're going to break out and do a transit planning exercise. So we'll roll out some maps. And then for the folks online, we have a concept board. And so we'll have uh, an online version for you that we'll kind of break out into little groups. And then so we'll do that and then we'll come back together and kind of share our findings from that. And then we'll just have the last few minutes for open discussion announcements from our members and then we'll adjourn. Okay, so I stop sharing. So we'll do introductions. So I'm Lauren Victor. I'm a long range transit planner here at WFRC. Hi, I'm Seamus Guida. I'm also a long range transit planner at WFRC. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen Richardson, uh, community member Ogden, as well as uh, and a Weber State employee. Thanks. Hello, I'm Brayden Pease. I'm a community member of Salt Lake City. So. Hi, I'm Alex Bame. I'm with uh, UTA Planning. Good evening, I'm Mike Sopchuk, uh, Communications Manager at WFRC. I'm uh, Kendall Willardson, I'm a Transportation Planner with MAG. Jeremy Shinoda, Ogden resident, Ogden Planning Commission. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Carolyn Halskin, Salt Lake City. Sarah Cody, community member, Cottonwood Heights. Hi everybody, Leah Baez, community member, Mill Creek, um, and also policy director with Promise Partnership Utah. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Waters. I'm the community engagement director with the Utah Transit Authority, UTA. Hi, I'm Olivia Bonds, a strategic planner over at UTA. Tara Rollins with the Utah Housing Coalition. I am Mike Christensen with the Utah Rail Passengers Association and also a member of Salt Lake City's Planning Commission. Curtis Herring, Executive Director of the Utah Transit Riders Union. Rosie Hernandez, Wasatch Front Regional Council. Uh, Toya. Hi, I'm Toya Jules, a community member, Salt Lake City and founder of Village Tree Health. Thanks, and Zuri. Hi, I'm Zuri Garcia, and I'm a resident in Davis County. Wonderful, and I think you can. Sorry, Shauna Mika, Mountain Land Association of Governments, which is like WFRC, but in Utah County area. Wonderful, and then I think the rest online are people here. So <laughs> we are good to go. So. Thanks everyone for being here. We're going to quickly um, jump into our group photos. So for the folks online, sorry for just a second, we're gonna go into 
the lobby to take a photo and then we'll be right back to take a photo with you all online. So just hold for now, thanks. Okay, for our folks online, if possible, can you turn your cameras on? Thank you. We'll get going with a photo in here. Sorry, we're trying to hide the people that are duplicates. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a setting where it just shows photos or cameras on. I'll 
hide my microphone behind you so I can tell them to smile. <laughs> All right, smile. We can Photoshop. You don't Photoshop. Yeah. Photoshop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get started. Um, so we are going to now go to our community member share. So Curtis, I will stop sharing. All right. Uh, if you want to go ahead and allow me to share my screen, that'd be great. Let me get there. The joys of technology. Okay, I can get this off my screen. All right, well, so yes, uh, so I'm here to present today about the Utah Transit Riders Union. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to kind of speak and let you know a little bit about what we are up to. So uh, what is the Utah Transit Riders Union? So we were formed back in 2015, basically out of frustrations uh, with the lack of late night service coverage. Uh, in, in the UTA system. We since expanded and our mission is now to serve transit riders statewide, uh, seeking to solve pr problems with the systems, both large and small. Our first initiative was actually a seven day challenge uh, where we asked policymakers to ride the systems that they were making decisions on. We welcome all, uh, we welcome all social, cultural and economic backgrounds, uh, people who take transit out of necessity, convenience, or just out of the common good uh, because they want to do it. Uh, we welcome those who ride daily, occasionally, or who wish they could ride, but don't currently have access to the ability to ride transit. But overall, we advocate for a transit system, uh, both better today and in the future. We do have a statewide scope. Uh, we, as an organization, advocate for not only better transit between connecting Logan and St. George, but also just improving bus stops at your local stop. Uh, so let's talk about our mission. Ultimately, it is better transit for all. The Utah Transit Riders Union advocates for users statewide. We stri strive to make transit reliable, accessible, comfortable, efficient, and affordable for all. And most importantly, we wanna make sure that we are creating a transit affirming culture. We wanna make a culture where people look at transit and say, yes, this is something I want. This is something that is valuable in our community. So we do have currently a couple of initiatives that we are working on. The two big ones that we're working on are what we're calling the CAT initiative, the Community Advocacy Training for Transit initiative, uh, and also Transit Imagined. So I wanna start off by talking about the CAT initiative. The CAT initiative uh, is working to increase community involvement and awareness uh, by advocating for transit, uh, by creating community-based trainings to discuss things like the history of transit in Utah, how zoning affects our lives, the roles communities, cities, and the state play in transportation and transportation decisions, and frankly, how people can play a deciding role in transit-related policy. Uh, we intend to make training possible uh, in 15 communities across the Wasatch Front in our first round, in our first phase, uh, all along the Wasatch Front, and we've targeted these communities based off of areas that are underserved by transit, either due to low or no access, 
it, either in terms of frequency or coverage or because they're not providing uh, as much service as they could for economic reasons. You can kind of see the map there. It spans from North Ogden, Ogden all the way to Spanish Fork uh, and to Willa to the university. Uh, our other initiative is Transit Imagined. So Transit Imagined asks a simple question. What would it be like if 2.1 million Utahns stretching from Logan to Nephi, from Tooele to Heber, lived, worked, and played within 10 minutes of a walk to a bus, BRT, light rail, and our commuter rail line? Not dissimilar from the 2050 plan, but we want to take it a step further. We want a 15-minute service minimum. Uh, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., 20-minute service from 8 p.m., so on and so forth. And what if this service was 365 days a year? Is it ambitious? Absolutely it is. Is it going to be expensive? Absolutely it is. But we want to have that target. We want to have something to strive for, and we want to get people talking about it. Uh, and so we want to start coming up with the ideas, the plans, uh, and what this would actually take to make this happen and make it a reality. So... Uh, as far as the, some of the things that we are actually doing on the ground today, uh, there's just a couple things that we are working on. One of the biggest things that we are focused on is our local chapters. Um, UTRU very much is a bottom-up organization. We are founded by the people that take transit. And we want to hear from those people, and that's how we decide what we want to focus on. So we have local chapters as the bedrock of our organization. Uh, these chapters are based off of all sorts of different things. It can be based off of geography. So for example, we have a South Salt Lake and Sugar House uh, organization. It can be based off of uh, the system that they use. We are currently in the process of starting a Cache Valley uh, union uh, or chapter, excuse me, uh, who is focused specifically on the Cache Valley transit system up there. We also can be based off of common interest. We have a UTRU students chapter, for example. Um, and the idea is that these chapters are the ones that are actively engaging with their communities. They know the issues that are affecting them on the ground uh, and filtering those ideas up to like the larger organization so that we can focus and go out and harass UTA from time to time uh, or work with UTA, for example, on issues from time to time. But ultimately, that's where it comes from. Um, we also want to create a space where people feel like they can engage more directly and in the public as far as what's going on. That's why we also have forums and project mappings uh, on our website. So we've created uh, forums posts where people can nerd out on our website and talk about transit projects and talk about, um, hey, this is what I'm noticing in my area. This is what I would like to see in my area. So that A, we can collect that information and, and help pass it along. But B, also so that people feel like they are creating that transit affirming culture. Uh, also. Oftentimes, you know, we, we talk about engagement in this room, uh, but we also talk about engagement in general and how can we bring more of that. So we've started to incorporate project mapping and we actually have a map of every single project that we are aware of that is transit related. Uh, and, and so people can go there and say, oh, this is going on in my area. Here's how I can actually access that website, access that information um, and, and get to the public comment section, for example, of those websites so that we can make it easier for people to actually know what's going on in their communities. And then finally, this one's more of a timely portion of our slide, uh, but we also do have board membership that is coming up. Uh, actually, in two weeks or a week and a half, uh, we will be holding our annual convention. Uh, so if anybody in the room is interested, we are holding uh, nominations right now uh, until next Monday. Uh, so if anybody is interested in sitting on our board, uh, we are taking nominations for people to sit on our board to help guide us for the next two years. Uh, all are welcome, but we do specifically want to encourage women, minorities, and those outside of Salt Lake County to apply. Uh, we think it's extremely important that we get a diverse membership on our board because it's a diverse membership as far as people who ride transit. Uh, and so we don't just be a bunch of old white guys driving around or, or riding around talking about what we want to see. So those are just some of the things that we're working on. Uh, we do pride ourselves in trying to become available and open for everybody. Here's just a couple of the ways that you can get a hold of us. Um, we too try to have a pretty good online engagement. But uh, yeah, in short, that's some of the things that UTRU is working on. Any questions, I can certainly answer them now. Otherwise, yeah, that's how you can get a hold of us. Cool. All right, well, thanks for sharing. Yep. Any questions? Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to just move to our future topics agenda item, and this is meant to be a discussion 
Um, and we want to make sure that we're not forgetting about those online. So I will stop sharing my screen during this. Um, and Rosie will keep tabs of any comments or raised hands online. I'll do my best as well. Um, but the point of this really was we want to get agenda items from you and hear about things that you want to learn more about or just things you're interested in or things you have questions on and don't really understand. Um, you know, we have a whole list of topics that we're ready to bring you, but we wanna make sure that we're reserving time um, to really get information to you that you're interested in and that is useful and applicable to you. Um, again, it is, we are transportation related, um, but we do look at land uses and things like that. So that's kind of our main focus, but we can have discussions about things outside of that. And so I just kind of want to open it up. Are there any topics or items that you want to see at future meetings? And there's no dumb topics. We'll work with anything. So will you uh, use your mic, please? Thanks. So it might be stupid, but <clears throat> it's not. <laughs> um, what does success look like? And how do you know? In terms of like project implementation, a committee like this, like what? Um, I guess project. Projects, okay, yeah. And Mike's helping me take notes. So I won't, like I'm not taking those notes, but we have this recorded and I have someone else helping me. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's a great one. We often talk about that as transportation professionals too. So we'll have plenty of information that we can bring to you on that. Any other ideas? And that definitely wasn't a stupid one. That was a great one. <laughs> oh, again. Okay. <laughs> so Curtis brought up <clears throat> how frequent um, bus, I mean, services. Is that a topic that we could talk about too in terms of um, having a better understanding? Because I think a lot of people don't take it because it's not consistent. Yeah, that's a great topic. Um, I think also, and now I'm gonna sound maybe stupid to talk Tara because I'm gonna talk about housing and I don't know what I'm talking about, but um, maybe related to development and how we're developing communities that are um, accessible and mobile um, in terms of transportation, transit, um, but also just like how they're built um, intentionally so people can get around locally. Yeah, we can look at maybe like our transit oriented communities team at UTA and yeah, that's a great topic. It's me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure, but I, I'd like to, you know, see some new numbers about how much it costs to have a car, you know, driven to spend and what that looks like. So I think it's a really good selling point. Yeah, maybe looking at like the cost for yeah owning a car versus taking transit or versus biking, kind of looking at different modes of transportation and how they kind of add up for people in our region. And I think the other piece is, is anybody looking at ways to increase ridership um, talking about the pandemic? So I had this aha moment today thinking, oh, you know what? I don't go to any meetings anymore. Everything's on Zoom. I could take the bus. Or, you know, and I just had this aha with this morning. And so, you know, are people looking at that in terms of trying to get people to take transit because they don't have to go to meetings during the day because that was such a time suck for, for a lot of us. Yeah, we can look into that. That's a great idea. I saw Zuri, I saw your hand. Yeah, so I know a while back when I was working for Extension, I we we worked for a minute with the um, health department and looked at like food deserts. And so I'm wondering about transportation in relation to food deserts and maybe how that is being considered. Yeah, that's a great one. Toya also you? has her hand raised. All right, we'll go to Toya, then we'll go to you, Stephen. 
Perfect. Um, I'm actually curious about your guys' um, plan to increase access to those with disability and who have maybe health needs um, to whether that's like increasing um, access to those things or just improving um, different rideshare opportunities for them to um, be able to, you know, go to doctor's appointments, things of that sort. Yeah, that's a really, really great important topic. That's a good one. Thank you, Stephen. What about defeating the stigma around public transportation? Is that's it a very good marketing one. And, and because of course in bigger cities, uh, that's the transportation. And uh, it's not just for low, low income individuals, disabled individuals, you know. Yeah, that's a great one. I think we can definitely have some good conversations on that. Hello. Um, what about working with employers to provide like affordable transit passes, like around the valley, like working with Adobe, working with the Silicon Valley Slopes, working with nonprofits and other organizations to provide like a low cost or no cost to employees? And yeah, I know UTA does some really good work on um, fare passes and things like that, but I think we can then have a conversation also about potential future opportunities and different partnerships that we can look beyond what is currently. Uh, in place. That's a good one. I'd like to tag on to that. So um, my thought too, I, I went online to see how much it was because I didn't really know. <laughs> so, um, And I was kind of surprised to see that to be a senior, you had to be 65. And so right now we are seeing so many homeless seniors because they can't afford their housing and a lot of them are still working. So if they were able to get a free pass, then, you know, I think having a better understanding um, of that cutoff would be really helpful. Yeah. As I was, whoa, as I was thinking about the uh, question of stigma surrounding riding public transit, it reminded me of a quote that I uh, can't remember if it was Enrique Penalosa, who was the mayor of Bogota or his brother, uh, who said it, but he's, one of them said that a developed city is one not where poor people own cars, but where the rich also take transit. And I think that is an important key because the, the, more, the more broader population that we can get riding transit, the more it becomes something that's on people's minds and something that is easy uh, for policymakers to see as, as valuable. Great one. Yeah. I think speaking of policy, um, just kind of what's going on at the legislative level um, in terms of state funding, federal funding, I think that'd just be good to know. Yeah, I think that would be a really helpful one. And we can, that's a really good one. <laughs> Any other thoughts? So I went to a, an event this morning. That's what got me thinking about the, the passes and stuff. So um, they had a really good panel on that. They had state, federal, um, regional, and they talked about money. And it was good. What meeting was that at? Wheels and Heels. Okay. That wasn't the official title, but that's what <laughs> came out. <laughs> Love that. Any other thoughts? I guess one more. <laughs> yeah, no, and please don't feel like you're talking too much. We've got plenty right, of time. On this. Too much. Um, I think it'd be really interesting to maybe have Claudia O'Grady come and talk about the QAP, which is a qualified allocation plan for housing and how they really try to get transit um you get so many points, blah, 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 blah. So I think it might be helpful for people to um, also be able to um, weigh in on some of the priorities that they have. Oh, that's great. I also feel like I'm talking a lot, um, but just like updates on free fare, subsidized um, fare. Yep, yep, that's a good one. Um, like income base, like 
um, brackets of like, oh, it's going to be this much, this much for like transit passes. Sorry, like, I'm oh. a little hard of hearing. Can you pull it closer? <laughs> yes. Um, I think income-based like transit passes. So no matter what your income is, you'll still like meet like a certain criteria to get the pass uh, to be affordable for everyone. I think that will encourage others and a lot of people to take transit. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. Yeah, and I think we can definitely bring some sort of fair what's happening now in terms of the the fair structure for different folks and then we can work together and identify gaps and then come up with some solutions i think could be helpful yeah one more thing sorry don't apologize <laughs> seriously not people um i really think um last year you know they were pushing to have free um fair and so maybe that's something that this group could you know be engaged in and um and help with that situation. Yeah, I know um, we're this year, if you weren't aware of it last year, we tried to hold some special sessions and they were pretty last minute um, because it's we're kind of at the mercy of when project teams come to us with updates and they wanna talk to our committees. Um, but we had one for the zero fair or free fair study, zero fares study, yes. Um, and yeah, they definitely talked a lot about that at the legislative session. And so I think that's something we can get you plugged in, keep you plugged in on, on that effort and try and see what we can do. Yeah. So at the end of last year, I'm wondering if anything came out of, out of this group that was actually recommended to the Washington Front Regional Council. I'm wondering if the advisory committee could have a standing section on the Wasatch Front Regional Council meeting as this is what came out of each meeting. And then at the end of the year, a report that said the Wasatch Choice Community Advisory Committee came up with these recommendations. Recommendations in terms of uh, to plans and studies that we bring to you or? Or uh, maybe a, a direction that the the WFRC uh, maybe wasn't originally considering, but a uh, new something that came out of this group that they adopted or um, could address and take on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something we can look at. And for all of the partners too involved, we can um, work with you and, and come up with something for that. And we're definitely keeping track of, um, you know, we put our uh, regional transportation plan, our draft regional transportation that was out for public comment. And so we provided those links and, and services and information to you. And so we keep track of any comments that we got and stuff like that. Um, but I think keeping track of any recommendations or things that change as outcomes from this is definitely in our purview, yeah. Brighton. So um, this is a kind of thing for like all school districts and like all schools um, in like the Wasatch area. It's the um, transit that most students are taking um, to get to high school. Um, there's many schools that are having um, insane prices for parking. And I, you know, <laughs> I say that because I don't even, you know, uh, use a car most of the time. But um, I think there should be more ways for students to safely get to their high school without having to use their car. Because the, the school that I go to has a parking lot of, you know, not not one of the biggest, but some down in Harriman um, has a massive parking lot because they are right by a highway. I, I feel like better transit um, design should be around schools also because uh, the plan doesn't really specifically do that also. Yeah, I think that's something we can have continued discussions on. I know one thing that we look at is access to opportunities, and that's something that we look at in this office and our partners use, and those opportunities are things like healthcare, education, and um, other services. And so we are trying to, but I think with anything that we do, we can always go a step further. So definitely something to continue talking about. So, um can you um, talk a little bit about UDOT's new position that they have for pavement of bicycles and all that? For pavement? Well, I, I mean, just thought about this, but over in Harriman, there's probably a, lots of opportunities to build safe bike 
Yes. Uh, yes. So Sorry, you got just hired for the very first time, somebody to really work on this. And I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. The trails and transit group. I think that's something we can have some information brought and presented. Cause like you said, I think there's going to be a lot of really great opportunities um, in that effort. So that's something we can definitely bring. Any other thoughts, questions? I I will want to get an update on the frequency, if there's any consideration for more frequency from the airport due to late flights and all, because there is- On I transit? The, yeah, because the, the think the train leaves 1110 or something like his last train, but what about the late arriving flights? Right. If we're not going to increase frequency uh, with the buses and the tracks until 2030. What about the airport? Is there a way to um, for hours? that particular line to to be first to have priority? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if UTA can address that. Yeah, I think that's something we can pull together some information and chat about that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the airport, it's not just people that are flying that are going to the airport, but the airport is also a major employer. And it would be like the airport would be able to reduce a lot of the parking spaces that it needs for employees if the uh, if the tracks line was running closer to 24 hours a day. Yep. Good one. Any other topics? And I think what I'll do is I'll compile kind of what I've heard today and I'll send it in uh, our follow-up email. And then if you think of anything afterwards, like you can just respond to that email and we'll add it to the list. But so I'll compile that all so you can see kind of what topics were brought up and then you can add anything else that you might see missing on that. And maybe Lauren, it's not, there's, there's a lot of UTA people here. We hear, we hear the UTA topics, the transit topics. Um, and so I'm sure in your list, um, we may interpret things in, in one way or bucket things. And so maybe before those meetings, we can just make sure we're capturing to um, what everyone wants to hear before we bring it to just make sure we have the right people and the right information. Cause there's a, there was a lot there. Great suggestions. <laughs> yes, definitely. Right. And I'll just add that it's great that so much of the, <clears throat> the questions and inquiries are about transit related. We love to hear it because I can talk about, I, for speaking for me, I can talk about transit all day. Uh, I do sometimes, but um, um, th th we are, this group is looking at everything with the transportation network. So if anyone has any questions related to other things, um, uh, you know, how roadway projects work or uh movements to you know it was mentioned the the bike access to schools but anything to do with uh, biking and pedestrian infrastructure uh, those are also topics that that could be on the table so I'll speak for our friends at UDOT also so good reminder yeah um I, I would like to add on to like the school thing um the buses are also one of the point I don't know what um uh, like authority, like uh, everyone has here about like school districts and their bus uh, and their buses. But um, I feel like it's both ride quality and also the delays on the buses because those are the major impacts. Um, we don't have any bus stations for our schools at all. So during winters, there's been multiple reports over the few years of students being left out in the cold because the bus comes late and they, they have no communication whatsoever if the bus is coming or it's going to be switched to a different bus. So I, I don't know uh, what um, is able to be done about that, like in this um, a committee, but th that, that's just like one thing that I have. Yeah, well, one other component that I think is really cool about this committee is that there's connections that are made. So just because we don't talk about it in a meeting doesn't necessarily mean you can't reach out to one of us and we can have other conversations. Granted, we want to make sure that we're having all those conversations so everyone has the same information is in the loop, but if there's side conversations or specific questions you have on different topics, get connected with one of us. You can ask that and, you know, if you get connected with me and it's not something I can answer, I'll make sure that I connect you with someone who's more well-versed on the topic. So use us as a resource. 
Okay, speaking of UDOT, so the lighting uh, along some of those major thoroughfares, such as 89, I think that's correct, I going up into South Ogden. So if you're going to have signs that say, watch out for the animals, <laughs> you know, why are you going to have a very long stretch of darkness? I think that should be key. If you're going to have the new paved roads, new constructed roads, lighting needs to be priority. It's a safety issue. So I yeah, I was just going to bring that back to safety. I think we could have a, a roadway safety conversation in kind of how we plan and how we construct our roadways. Exactly. Sarah? Yeah, and bringing, like, continuing on safety, um, one of the things I've talked to my students about a lot when I, we talk about, like, transportation and all of that, they they get to ride the um, trains and trail or track systems a lot, and they say that that's one of the things that the reason they're not on campus very late or they don't come to a lot of our later activities is because they don't want to be on tracks and trains later at night is because they don't feel safe. Um, so that's another thing that we can discuss and maybe address. Yeah, that's a really important topic. Definitely safety in all aspects. So I think we should definitely find a way to chat about that, make sure it's helpful. Any other notes? Okay, well, I think we'll move on for now, but like I mentioned, I'll compile what we've talked about um, into kind of a list and we'll share that in the follow-up email so you can review that and um, you can add if there's any gaps or things you forgot about. Okay, so now we are going to move um, to our exercise and I am going to pass it off to Alex, who's gonna kind of introduce the topic and then we'll go over directions and then um, our staff will help set up the tables and we'll get ready for this exercise. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a little uh, service planning exercise uh, and just gonna give a little brief intro to give some context to it. Um, so, you know, one thing that people ask a lot is, is, is what, what do you need to do, have more ridership on your service? Um, or I see, sometimes I see the buses aren't full or whatever it is. Um, you know, there was a question about, you know, post pandemic service, all those other kind of things. So um, when we think about uh, what makes ridership successful, it's really all these things are um, about land use. Uh, so you need density. Um, if you, the more you have people and jobs close to stations and stops, uh, the more likely it is for people to be able to use that. Uh, but it's not just density. So I, I will say uh, what often happens when we're thinking about planning, people remember, they remember this part, right? They're like, we've got a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this community, but um, there's other pieces to land use. Um, that are also as important. Um, the ability to, to, to draw a straight line for a route, right? So what often happens is routes might sometimes start as a straight line, but then somebody comes in and they say, well, you know, this this big shopping mall just opened and it's the the, the door is a mile away from the road. And so can you can you deviate the service, take the service off route? Um, you know, a lot of schools and institutions. Um, Hospitals are sometimes a challenge because they both are serving folks with a lot of mobility needs. And they also, if you look at what they look like, they're often a big tower in the middle of a parking lot set way back from the road. So uh, so then they're like, well, of course, you know, you care about, you know, disabled veterans or whoever it is, you need to take this service and go, go, go half a mile across this parking lot and go to the front door. Uh, and then, you know, you've got scattered communities around when you have that sort of thing um if you're going from the left end of the line to the right end of the line it's a bad trip for you right because you just your your trip that would have been 20 minutes in a car now takes two hours in a bus because you're weaving all around uh proximity we have a lot of this here 
um, where there's pockets of development, but there's nothing anywhere near it. Um, I don't want to, I'm not going to call out any place in particular, but some of us could probably think of, of places where there's a new development, greenfield development, that, that's, it, it's, developers love it, there's nothing there, um, you know, it, it's right by the mountains or something, but there's nothing, it's not near anything, and then, and then they have this huge development, and they say, of course, we need transit service, right? Will you um, just explain what a greenfield development is? Greenfield being, uh, essentially what it sounds like. It's a greenfield. It was a farm or uh, open space before that, as opposed to brownfield development, which is is more infill, kind of uh, something that was, maybe it was a factory or something else that's more expensive to redevelop because you might have to clean up the land or something before you can build on it. Uh, greenfield areas are often less expensive also because they are farther away from things. Um, but of course for transit, that creates a challenge. Um, and then walkability is key, right? So the, the diagram you're looking at here uh, shows two different, in the middle is a bus stop or station, uh, and the radius is, is a distance around that. If you have a grid of streets, you can get to most of that circle, but what often happens is there's a highway, there's a disconnected street network, uh, there's some place that you cannot pass, so um, that really limits how much space you can get to from to and from transit. Uh, and then, of course, you add frequency on that on top of that. We've we've talked about that uh, a little bit already. So, um, and and high ridership is an outcome of all these things, right? So, um, but that's not all we're asked to do. Um, so sometimes uh, we're asked to do things that have nothing to do with ridership. Uh, that might be access for people in rural or even very low, dense, uh, low density areas. Um, it can be service to new growth areas, right? The, there's places that have not filled out yet, but we know they're expanding and there's people who have needs to get out there or from there. Um, and then really another thing that people ask for is, um, you know, I don't care if it's an empty bus, I am paying taxes and so I want that empty bus running on my, um, you know, sound wall subdivision uh, because I'm paying taxes. Uh, and that's a method, right? So that's something you try to do. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the trade-offs. Um, when you run frequent service uh, or ridership-based service, right, that's, you're getting higher ridership. Um, it's, it's more efficient, right? Because you have more people on every bus or every train. Uh, but you don't cover as much area. You only go to the places that are dense, the places that are walkable, the places that can support transit. Um, but it's a better service. Um, it, it's sort of a self-fulfilling, right? So as, as transit gets better, more people use it. It enables us to run it more frequently. It makes it then um, more palatable to use. You don't have to plan your day around it. Um, longer access time, that means that... Uh, you may have to walk farther uh, to get to it. Um, it's not going to stop everywhere. It's going to be fast. Um, and it will only succeed. When we say succeed, it will only generate high ridership in certain places. Uh, on the flip side, you have this cover ser coverage service. That's where you're not going to, no matter what you do, you're not going to have a lot of people using it. Um, you're going to have a higher cost for everybody that you do pick up. Um, but you will cover more area, right? You'll cover a lot more areas that you don't get to. Um, you're going to have longer wait times because as you meander around uh, a suburban neighborhood without sidewalks, um, not many people are going to use it. So it's hard for us to justify having a lot of service out there. Um, on the flip side, you know, it increases access. You get closer to more things. Um, and it can work anywhere uh, as long, but it depends on what your definition of success is. If your definition is to have some level of transit service near everybody, right, you really focus on coverage. And with that, any questions before we move into the actual transit planning activity where you all will get the opportunity to uh, make decisions uh, in the town of Pleasant Mountain Fork. Uh, 
and let's uh sh should we go ahead and put the maps out on the table so folks can see them so we're going to grab those and then uh for folks online we will be sharing a content board which will have the same map uh and in lieu of physical string uh or tape things uh you will have little online tapes that you can put on so um as you look at the maps there's darker areas that indicate there's more jobs and people um and the blue and purple areas can indicate special use areas um and the gray lines which are in a grid which we may all be familiar with since we live uh in utah where we love grids um and the gray lines are the road so you want to have your transit service operate on the road uh and you will get 10 segments uh, that each represent a transit line. Um, the red lines are really good 15 minute service. The blue lines are 30 minute service. And the green line comes one an hour, uh, once an hour. Uh, and once again, you will see that with the same dollar amount. So what this represents essentially is your budget to operate service. Um, so um, the more frequent it is, the less uh, distance you can cover, uh, and the less frequent it is, the more distance you can cover. Um, and we will walk around as you're working on this, um, and you can exchange any um, string for a different color string, but you have to end up with the same amount of strings at the end. Um, and then just a quick wonky note, uh, if you look at the screen, um, a transit ride route can't hit a T and go two different directions. So it either has to, one side has to, uh, you have to have two routes to make it work. Uh, with that, uh, any questions on what we're going to be doing? And um, Megan and Olivia will uh, be walking around and assist and talk and and Lauren's done this a lot too, so she'll help us out. So uh, we'll take a little bit of time, maybe uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, we're running ahead of schedule, so yeah. we have a little time. So we'll just kind of gauge, but yeah, go ahead and get started and we'll yeah be around to answer questions. Um, we're gonna mute the main room um, because Che is gonna be leading the online folks. All right, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Good. I am going to share my screen and then we can get going. All right. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So um, now, well, the mouse is very touchy with this, so I apologize. Um, so you guys got kind of the basic gist of it. Um, and what we'll do is you guys can kind of talk amongst yourselves and figure out exactly how you want, where you want to put things. And then I will go ahead and drag and drop um, different items, you know, so we can take, if you wanted this 15 minute service, uh, we can put it, you know, wherever you guys want it. Um, but the, the one thing I can also do is we can basically like extend and like elbow it out uh, so that uh, not everything just has to be in a straight line because um, that's not exactly how transit works. So, uh, and then the, basically your, your starting service that they give you is you'll get these, these 10 segments here, but you can also trade different segments. And so if you wanted to take this 60 minute service or this 30 minute service, um, and you wanted to do 15 minute services, uh, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then we can do it that way. Um, and it's totally up to you guys, how you guys want to build this out. Mm -hmm. And I can zoom if you need me to zoom in, let me get, that should be a little. Hey, could you, could you remind me what the, um, uh, what the different what the different colors and shades represent? Yes. So for the services, red is 15 minutes, blue is 30 minutes, and then green is 60 minutes. 
Um, and then on the map itself, uh, we basically have our industrial and business areas, which are these blue, these different blue uh, sections on the map, um, our more dense city urban type areas are that orange reddish color. And then our suburban areas are kind of that more light, light orange, yellow color. Um, and yeah. That's helpful. Thank you. Not a problem. Yeah. And if you need me to zoom in, zoom out, um, just let me know. And we put this down here in the bottom just to kind of, uh, as like a reminder of like what, what the differences are. Cause we, I did this activity, uh, in person at a UTA transit Academy. Um, and when they brought it out, I was like, Oh, this is like super simple to do, but in reality, it's you you know, you only have so much, so much service that you can do. So you only have the 10 segments, uh, and you're like, Oh, you know, should, should I put this here? Or how should I organize this? Because, uh, you have to think about, you know, especially with like the coverage service, like it's, you know, super important for people to, uh, have access to their industrial jobs, but then there's the lower ridership, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just, you know, keeping, keeping those things in mind. I have a question. So if I do like zooming, is that affecting everybody else? No. And if you, oh. if there's something that's not clear also, if like all of you need to look at one thing, um, just let me know. and then I can, there is only three of us. So I want to say, I think I can share this with you guys. Um, we were unsure. Let me, let's see. So I just have my, I'm on my cell phone, so I don't know if I would, but maybe someone oh, else got it. Okay. Someone else might be able to access it better. I will, I will paste this in here and you guys should be able to access that. Oh. Um, and then that way, uh, I can still drag and drop things, but if you want to, you know, kind of look at it, zoom in on your own. Um, that makes it a little bit easier access for you guys. And I can kind of, if you need any, any help with that, but yeah, if you want to start sticking different lines of service in, um, or need some help getting started on it, just let me know what you guys want to do. Um, I have an idea. I would say prioritizing the 15 minute services in mm -hmm. like high occupancy areas such as like the medical center um can i read this at the university senior housing and like you know what those areas that obviously there's those with disabilities mm -hmm. um that needs those services and then also um like the high occupancy like let's say if like let's say university of utah is the university right we would yeah. need um, you know, because there's a lot of students that live on campus, also live off campus. We'll also be needing more 15 minute services around those areas. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially like the senior living, um, and those, and like the medical center, I would say those 15 minute services are more ideal there to help those with disabilities and help students and get to places quicker. Um, places like the shopping center, Central Park, um, you know, because obviously they're not technically necessities um such as like education and medical mm -hmm. i would say um maybe the 30 minute um or even the 60 minute in some of those areas depending on which one it is um but that's just my suggestion um i think okay, this are, we, uh, are we talking um are we talking just bus or um potential for tracks as well I think the I think the idea is it would be it would be either. Um, and I think it's more of just like it in general, it's just a, like a service. Um, OK, I don't 100 percent know, but I believe the the point behind it is like it can be it could be either things. But the the service interval is like the focal point. Um, yeah, because that that. Uh, that does change things, but I think, yeah, for the exercise, it's supposed to be kind of a, a general, a general term. Um, so do we want to stick like one here in this zone? Is that kind of what you were talking about, Toya? Like having, yeah. it, you guys can, so if you, if you see on my screen, there's this, I don't know how it looks for you guys. 
Um, but there's these uh, different, can you guys see this toolbar up here? Mm -hmm. um, if you click on this arrow and then you can drag and drop these around. Okay. So, and just, yeah, these are your guys' like kind of starting, uh, starting 10. And then we can trade in different ones if you want. More 15 minute service, et cetera. I uh, like, want to do like a big loop all the way around so that those lower, less dense areas can still have access. So like drag, where would you want me to drag that? Like in, would you want to do like a, a loop? Maybe right there. there? Maybe. Like right there? Yeah. So it's closer. <laughs> I know a lot of people, um, especially in those kind of like urban, not urban, but like suburban areas, mm -hmm. like really take transit for um, to like come into the city. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely want to have, or like, you know, you guys could let me know what your thoughts are, but um, some, like she mentioned, some access there as well um, to yeah. like maybe like a 30 minute service as well in, in we some of those take, areas. I mean, we can take this line and it doesn't necessarily have to be this way we can um we can make it you know we can move this around so if you wanted let's say i don't know like something more like maybe one of the ends going into the industrial that bottom industrial yeah, yeah so we could go we can almost take this put that there and then you can always take it like, no, I like that. Yeah, we can do something, something along those lines. But yeah, if you guys, if if it's easiest for me to drag and drop, that's fine. Where, so where did you, let's see. So we have a 60 minute and you want to, do you guys want to do a full loop around with that 60 minute like, service? Yeah, I thought like that would be ideal. Okay. Sorry, some of these I gotta bring. There we go. So we can take this line. Bring it up. And then how would you want, how do you guys want this connection to go? Where do you want it to go in at? Um, Through the line? Yeah. Um, yeah, because could only, be a little bit higher, a little bit higher, like up in here. Yeah, just so that we have connection, like close to the shopping center. So if we can reach, um, the shopping center, also the medical yep. center, and then around the business park, big box that can kind of connect those so that we're able to. Yeah, we can get that full that full loop in. Yeah, and just so that the, it hits some of the places. What's the scale on this? Because I'm. I'm unfortunately are... out in the verbs at the moment, and so I'm just <laughs> think: are we, are are we theoretically looking at um downtown, or how far out are how far out is this theoretically? So each of these squares is a half mile by a half mile. Oh, so you're gonna make me uh... you're gonna make me do math, aren't you? <laughs> So each, yeah, so every two, every, every two squares is basically a um, mile. Uh, mile, yeah. All right, then we can get this. Go down. My, my other concern is like um, medical access to people also in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So um, would we want to put like another like 15, 30 minutes somewhere there to connect with the 60 minute service? somehow yeah like in cool. from here to hold on let me get this let's grab one of part of one of these so we can, can create if we create more access points for people also in the suburbs without taking away from the inner city just because we don't want to completely isolate people in the suburbs so they have access to some of these things yeah. Um, yeah. In a quick way, even if it's just a 30 and not necessarily the 15. Where would you want to put that one at? Where your cursor's at now? Um, 
Yeah, perhaps. Maybe um, having it at different access points, like the university, the medical center. So we could um, put so something along, like as in here, but then having it come out this way, like connect in like this. Um, I was thinking more so like connecting from the from the sixty minute service, so that if they ever wanted to like like for instance get off at a stop, mm -hmm. um, to get closer to like a medical center or, you know, like take the bus or um to somewhere else that's closer or perhaps connecting the medical center and the shopping center from a thirty minute service so that they can get to different points quicker. Yeah, like in, having to go all the way around. Okay, yeah. So you want yeah. something something more like okay, go away thing. There we go. Something more like this, like this connection here. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, and I and I wonder like if is is this both ways? I'm wondering because I know you have to wait 60 minutes before it shows up again. Yeah, and I think that I think the idea of it is is that is a good question, and I don't know, uh, I don't know UTA's answer, but for our purposes, I would say, and I think I want to say when we did it, it was both ways. It wasn't just yeah. like a, like a, a directional track; it was bidirectional. I think mm -hmm. I I think I remember that being the case when I when I've done this before as well. Yeah. Um. Okay. What do we want to do with these 15 minute services? So we can create, I think when, I want to say when I did it, we, we did it. And I think we had like kind of similar to this, like 60 minute service on the outside and then some 15 minute service or some 30 minute service coming in. And then like in that city center, 15 minute service, but we might've had like this might have been 15 minute service from the medical um or from like maybe we had something over in here uh that was similar to like this um with like a a line of uh a 15 minute service here and then a line of 15 minute service coming like this mm -hmm. but that's entirely up to you guys how you want to do that Cause that's, I feel like your, your, you know, your main urban, I guess, dense portions of the city where people are, you know, either if you're, you're coming out, uh, you're coming into the city, you can take a little bit longer service and have your trip planned a little bit more. Whereas like in the city, that service can be more frequent. Right. Um, and also increasing access to senior housing mm -hmm. to the medical center. So let's see where ideal. We can do that. Yep. Because Senior housing. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find. I'm it. trying to like consider <laughs> um certain populations and their needs, yeah. like especially yeah. like at yeah. risk populations, like the senior, the seniors, and maybe yeah, high school kids. The other thing I keep thinking oh. about is um is um access to um access to grocery stores and mm -hmm. uh, and food. Mm -hmm. so that would be so if you want to so do we want to tackle the senior center and then we'll tackle uh access to to food so senior center is here is right in this zone mm -hmm. and where how do you guys want to connect that into this area and then you were also speaking about the medical medical services so do you want to keep like a 15 minute line maybe to here and then connect we could do something like this yeah so yeah. One more. So we can take this line. Oh. There we go. Yeah, because then there is some access for seniors to get into the city, the city center, and to get to a medical uh medical areas. Um, all right. And then as for I wonder, does equal does City center equals shopping, like access to food and uh, random shopping. I would assume that it does. I don't think it's been clarified, but I would, I guess if we're thinking of it, I mean, this isn't necessarily based off anything, but if we're thinking of it 
like, you know, let's say it's Salt Lake City, then you would, then the answer would be yes, right? Because you would have, yeah. you'd have the grocery stores, um, you know, places that you could fill a prescription uh, mm-hmm. and then, you know, clothing, mm-hmm. it's that type of thing, et cetera. Okay. Sticking to my grandma, she'd like to go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day. <laughs> um. Yeah, because that is a big, that is a big one. I had lived in San Diego for five years and we were, Pretty much every, there was three grocery stores within walking distance, which was uh, something that was, that was very nice. And we didn't even live in downtown. Um, yeah. So that is a big, I know that is a big, uh, a big thing that I, I miss here. Um, all right. Where do we want to, so we got, we can take these and we can put these in or we can trade these out. If you guys want to do more 15 minutes. Okay, we're going to wrap up in about two minutes. So finish your boards. We got to be quick. Back together and kind of chat about what we did and and the rationale behind it. Do we want to run? Because we can take. Go all the way across business to business parts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Where do you guys want it on this block here? Or do you guys want to put it on this block? Because I guess this might have a little bit more access to and we yeah, could create like a access. connection yeah mm-hmm. um because yeah. this will connect us and then we can and let's see and somehow we should do something with the university though yeah yeah well we could trade if, do you guys want to trade this one in for two 15 minute pieces yeah let's do that all right and then where do we want to put know. two red lines at Connecting to the universities, um, probably to the other red lines so that it can connect to the city center. All right, we'll extend this a little bit. And then do you want to do this line basically from the university down and create like a kind of loop right here? Or do we want to do, we could do like this, like an L almost? Hold on. Yeah, let's do an L. Yeah, let's do an L. We did like that. You almost have a loop within right does that does that look good to you guys it's beautiful we can only hope (laughs) people like it yeah it's it is it is tough when you're like looking at uh i don't know all of the different considerations um because you you know the hard thing is is you want this to have access but you also need all these people to have access as well Mm -hmm. um and yeah, it is, it is difficult. All right. I'm going to go into the other room, but I think I'll leave, I'll leave this up and I'll bring my computer in just in case. But then I'm, I believe Lauren will probably have one of her, all of you guys kind of make some comments on there. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. It was good, good participation. Thank you. Okay, let's get everyone back. Um, We're gonna go group by group. Uh, We'll start with the online folks. And what we'll do is um, for the people in the room, we'll have you come up here. You can come up with your group. You don't have to come up alone. Um, And one person will talk through kind of the rationale behind your transit system. Um, And we can go ahead and start with the online folks. If there's someone that kind of wants to talk through how you got to the system that we see online. Yeah, we'll be happy to kind of share what we, our thoughts on this um, plan. So we wanted to increase access to vulnerable populations as well as students. Um, so we have our high school and university, our senior living center having access to city center, um, even access especially to the medical center for our senior folks, and um, we created kind of this box around the suburbs, the suburbs, because we assumed you know they have more time to plan trips and either access to their own cars or transportation. Um, but the main focus again was those um, vulnerable population students, seniors, um, high school students, things of that sort. 
Wonderful. Okay, um, next we'll have Stephen and Brighton. Will you come up and bring your map? And I'll come up with you since I was with you both. Which one of you wants to? Do you feel comfortable talking about this? Oh, sure. Okay, so our group wanted to make sure we focused on coverage. So if you can see how we are on the perimeter of most of the major spots, and we thought very carefully about how far, if we get to the edge of these developments and the uh, warehouses, we still want those individuals to be able to walk to their places of employment. Um, and so we try to come in closest, closer as possible to uh, the center of those destinations. And then the rapid, the 15 minute, I think it is service, is also around those vulnerable populations as well as the schools. Um, and the middle service, 30 minute service, I think we have toward the middle, yes, coming through the middle. And we wanted to focus, make sure all of the lines connect at some point so that there will transfer. So we want, would not have to have uh, much walking or any driving to the faster service. So if you take the longer route, you'll get to the faster service. So we try to, to focus on coverage and get people to where they need to be. Okay. Um, let's have Curtis and Mike and Tara. So we primarily focus kind of on a hub and spoke system uh, where uh, the central system, is, the central districts are primarily focused on for the highest frequency service so that we can have the fastest connections. Uh, but also uh, the 30 minute service, uh, getting people mostly across through the densest portions of the city. So the highest density uh, while getting people from the universities and uh, like senior housings to the hospital, we felt were particularly important or the medical center, I should say. So at least providing some coverage through there. Otherwise, at least providing general coverage to the majority of the areas with general walkability. I mean, it's a quarter of a mile, so it's still quite a bit, but um, at least providing a circulator route uh, through the outer suburbs uh, so that people can at least connect to faster routes as much as possible. Uh, that was kind of our general thinking uh, behind what we were doing yeah okay and then we'll go with the back table or was there another map at this table or you just okay love it okay let's go at the back table come on up you can all come up I can interpret it. I can take my best guess. <laughs> you got it. So it was important for us that individuals um, went to all the different areas, like from high school to university to the medical center, it's convenient for them to get to. And we had it going more like um, crossing over each other. So there's more frequency. So if they're crossing over each other, they're able to um, go to these areas, like the high population right here, especially with the universities and um, high schools. And I think uh, we also wanted to encourage recreation to the mountains, so we brought it all the way out there and recreation at the uh, the bayou. Uh, and our soul high frequency runs right through here.
Okay. What did you learn while doing this? Also, will you use the microphones? I'm sorry, it's annoying, but I wanna make sure the folks online can hear. The city planner was not the best city planner in this activity, but this is a really hard activity and I have a lot more respect for those who are doing like the railways, like, cause this is hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard. And there's so many things that go into it. So it's just, yeah. Anything else? We need to increase funding for transit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone online? It's okay if not. I'm not going to make you guys talk. But I like when you do. <laughs> okay. Well, that was kind of all we had. The last agenda item we had was just um, announcements um, to share between committee members if you have any events coming up um, or things like that. I'll just do another plug um, for the Utah Transportation Conference. Um, if you saw the email, I hope you did. Um, UDOT had sponsored all of you for a free registration to that. So if you have any questions or that deadline was missed, reach out to me and we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, if there's any other, what? Um, it's October 24th, 25th, and 26th. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But yeah, if there's any member events coming up, please feel free to share them here. And then we'll also make sure that we share them in our follow-up email. Again, the, uh, my center, Black Cultural Center, has a mixer. It's called the Mix Up. It's super fun. Um, we start by doing icebreakers so that our students get a little bit more comfortable with uh, traditional networking. And then we end with a traditional networking event. So our professionals feel a little bit more comfortable with a networking event. Um, that is October 19th. It is a Thursday. So if I'm wrong about the date, it is the Thursday closest to October 19th. Um, and it will be at... We just changed the location. I will send you, Lauren, yep, the information. Yep, we can send out that info. But it is super fun. Um, and we're trying to just expose our students to all sorts of career opportunities um, so that they know what is out there. So anyone who is interested in coming, please, please, please come join me. I'd love to see you all there. Beautiful. Anyone online have any things they want to share? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Curtis. So yeah, just as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, if anyone is interested in being on the YouTube board, uh, it just time commitment wise, it's, there's one board meeting a month, about an hour. We just discuss what, how to improve transit across the state of Utah. We are taking applications for nominations uh, until next Monday. So if you are interested or just have questions, please reach out to me. Um, information I'm sure will be available. Um, so yeah, if you are interested, please reach out. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we'll end a little early then. Not super early. Sorry. Okay. Thanks all for coming. And thanks to those online. Thanks for joining. <laughs>